so far whenever we made a request to the server we only got response data and not the complete response object but sometimes when we make a request to the server and get the response we might also be interested in other response related things like the status code of the response or the headers etc so currently what is happening is when we make any type of request for example get request post request put request delete request etc we are going to get some response and in the response we are only going to get the response data and to show you that what i will do is here i will write console.log statement so here let's say console.log and here let's log the response okay and here we are doing it inside this get method so inside this get all tasks method if i go to our application let me open developer console here let's clear everything and when i click on this fetch task button you will notice that in the console a response has been logged and this response is basically the response body it is not the response object itself instead from that response its body has been extracted and that has been returned and this behavior is because whenever we make a request to the server using the http client there by default here for this get method we are passing this second parameter this anonymous object in that object currently we are setting the headers params and in the same way there is also one more property which we can set which is observe and by default this observe has this value body okay so by default in the response we are going to get the response body so this is the default behavior if i save the changes again and if you go to the web page and if i again make the get request to get all the tasks here you will see that the same response has been logged but if you want to get the complete response object where we also have the response header response status code etc then what you can do is you can change this observe to response so now if i save the changes and if you go to the web page and now if i make a fetch request here you will notice that now the complete http response object has been logged and there we also have this body so this is the same body which we were getting earlier when the observe was set to body or when the observe was not specified so when we don't specify this observe property here in that case by default it will be body so in that case we were getting this response but now when we have set the observe to response in that case we are getting the complete response object there you can see the response header the response status code status text and this type as well now i will explain what this type is in a bit and here you can also see the url to which we have made the request so this is what happens when you set observe to response then the third value which you can set for this observe is event and actually it should be events now to understand this events what we are going to do is here let me go back and let me set it to body because here we are only interested in body okay and let's scroll down and let's go to delete all tasks method so here we have delete all tasks method and here when we are making a delete request to the server it is going to return us some response currently since we have not specified any second parameter for this delete method as you can see we are only passing the url so in that case by default the observe property will be set to body right but here we can also pass a second anonymous object and there we can set the observe property explicitly and here we want to set it to events all right now in this case what it will do is it will return us some events which will happen between the request is sent and response is received so on that we are using this pipe method in order to use this catch operator let's say along with this catch operator before we are calling this catch operator i also want to call tap operator and in order to use this tap operator we also need to import it from operator slash rxjs so if i scroll up we are already importing map and catch error in the same way let's also import tap all right now let's scroll down 
and to the step method we need to pass a callback function this callback function is going to receive the event which has occurred so let's simply call it as event and now let's simply go ahead and let's log that event in the console so here we want to log that event which has occurred and keep in mind there can be multiple events which can occur in between sending the request and receiving the response so here if i save the changes and if you go to the web page let me clear everything here and when i click on this clear task button just notice what happens so here you can see two events has been logged in the first event we can see an object where the type is set to zero and in the second event which has occurred there we are receiving this http response and if i expand that there you will see that the type is set to four so this type is basically tells what type of event has occurred so for example if i go back and here if i write an if statement and there if i say event dot type equals http event type and in order to use this http event type we also need to import it from angular slash common slash http okay so this http event type it is an enum on that enum if i say dot you will see all kinds of events which can occur so here you can see this is one event download progress this is another type of event called response so this event is raised when we have received the response in the same way we also have this response called sent and this event happens when the request is sent to the server so type 0 means this sent event has happened and type 4 means this response event has happened so if i go back here you will see the first error all right let's go back and there let's simply say dot response okay let's save the changes let's go back to our application and here let me go ahead and let me create a task let's click on this create task button so here we can see that we have an error so basically it says this url is not found that's because let's go back and there if i scroll up to the post method so to this create task method there you will notice that we have added this extra sss so let's remove that let's save the changes let's go back to our application now let's try to create a new task so here let's say some task some task description assigned to mary jane let's select a date medium started create task and now let's click on this fetch task button so you can see that task has been created and it is being displayed here let me clear the console and now when i click on this clear task button you see the two events have been logged here the first event is of type 0 that means it is sent event and the second event it returns us the http response so it is of type 4 that means it is response event okay so these two events have happened when we send the request to the server and when we receive the response so as i mentioned we have six different types of events the download progress event so basically it will be raised when we are downloading a file and when the download is in process in the same way we also have this upload progress event so this event will happen when we upload a file so it will show us the progress of that upload all right so these are the events which can happen and we can tap into these events for example let's say whenever the request is sent to the server we want to show something in the ui for example we want to show a toaster to the user saying that the request has been sent so we can write that logic inside this if statement in the same way if we want to do something when we have received the response we can check if the event type is http event type dot response and if it is a response event in that case also we can write some logic to handle that event so in this way using this observer property you can access the response in a very granular level and it provides more control over how we can update the ui as i mentioned earlier 
one of the use cases can be when you send a request from your angular application and want to show a message to the user in the ui saying request is sent you can handle that send event okay you can handle that send event by checking if the event type is http event type dot sent so if it is sent in that case here you can write the logic to show a message to the user in the ui all right finally you can also configure something called as response type so this last argument which we pass to the http method so this delete here it is an http method so to this http method we pass an anonymous object as the last argument and in that anonymous object we can set headers we can set query parameters we can set observe and in the same way we can also set response type and we can set this response type to either JSON. So by default, it will be JSON. We can set it to text or we can also set it to blob. And there are many other options as well. For example, array buffer. So when you set the response type to JSON, in that case, when we receive the response, that response get automatically converted to a JavaScript object. And then we can make use of that JavaScript object in our application. We don't have to convert that JSON response into the JavaScript object manually. But if you set it to text, in that case, you're going to get the JSON response as a string value. It will not get converted automatically to JavaScript object. Then you can also set it to blob. So you can set the response type to blob if you are getting a file in the response. But in most of the cases, we might want to set this response type to JSON itself because what we want is the JSON data which we are going to receive, we want it to be automatically converted into a JavaScript object so that we can work with it in our Angular application. So I hope the use of this response type is clear to you. So to this anonymous object, which we pass as the last argument to any HTTP method, there we can set the HTTP headers, we can set the query parameters, we can set this observe and we can also set the response type. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.